Hi there again everyone, Josie here, Life at 50 and Beyond. Thanks for joining me here in my channel where you will find mostly affordable, practical, and easy DIYs. Today I'm going to show you how I made this. So let's get started! For the first DIY, I will be doing a refresh of my decorganizer that I created back in December. I used this thankful sign that I got at Dollar Tree about two falls ago and I'm not going to be showing you the full tutorial here I'll just be linking it in the description box below it's, this is just a small snippet of it so that you will see what is the final outcome of that project so that was the topper of this decor organizer because I just added the bottom part where I used a similar size box sign that is sold at Dollar Tree as well. I just painted it in white. Again, watch the full tutorial. The link is in the description box below. It could fit items that are no more than maybe two and a half inches high and no more than an inch and a half thick. So today I'm just gonna be replacing the top, the design on the top. So that's the reason why I only use hot glue for the most part when I am creating things. Because I figured, especially for seasonal items, I would need to store them and replace them and make them also usable any time of the year. So I just remove those three trees. And then what I'm going to do here is using this sandpaper, I am just going to smooth out the top because there are some residue from the glue. I'm also using the same sandpaper to smooth out and also give an aged or distressed appearance on the edges. So I'm just testing out this sign. I got this at Target Dollar Spot or Target Bullside Playground a few years back and it was $3. Here I'm just going to show you this wooden block. You can use this as a handle if you don't want to add any decorations so that you can just lift it up easily. So I'm just going to be using this damp paper towel and I'm just removing any of the dust left by sanding and using my paintbrush I am just applying a couple of coats of chalk paint and I will be linking in the description box below as well the link to the chalk paint. So I have this box of essential oils that I got at Amazon. This is not a sponsored video by the way. So I figured I am just going to be using this as a storage for my essential oils. I have about 18 bottles here and this one can actually fit I think over 20 or maybe even a total of 24 as long as you have those smaller size of essential oils like what I'm showing here. These essential oil bottles I think the measurement on this one is about maybe an inch and a half high and then about half an inch thick for each bottle so I could actually fit two bottles or two rows of bottles here and like I said I have a total of 18 and I could probably fit another six bottles there total of 24 and then I'm just gonna be hot gluing this wooden sign they also sell a wooden sign at Dollar Tree and it may not be the same style and not pre-painted like this I'm not gonna change the paint on this one I had actually was thinking about painting it in black but I like the gold and it is actually distressed and it's still farmhouse so I really love this concept that I can hide things and not only because they're unsightly but because sometimes I just don't want to see clutter and I like the fact that this is a decor organizer a home decor slash organizer. Now I just want to take a moment to mention that I am participating in the Golden Girls on a Budget DIYs $10 or less with my two YouTube friends and this is hosted by Living My Best Life with Lisa Marie and Elaine Petrakis the Midnight Crafter is also joining us. So us three will show you DIYs that are no more than $10. So maximum ten dollars but mostly are less than ten dollars after watching this video 
I would like to invite you to also head out to their channels. I will be linking them in the description box below so that you can watch also the DIYs that they have prepared for this collaboration. I'm actually going to be heading out there too. I'm excited to watch what they have for us. These two ladies are also golden girls like myself and I'm pretty sure you will love them. And I want to say thank you to Living My Best Life with Lisa Marie for hosting this collaboration and I am wishing her well on her new channel and hopefully we can have another Golden Girls collaboration in the future. On to the next DIY. DIY number two is an upcycling DIY using this empty can. And I don't know about you, I always save these types of cans because you can use them for a lot of things. So I'm just ripping off this wrapping or label and the only thing that I really don't particularly enjoy is removing the goo at the back and where they glue that paper or label. So in case you're wondering, this is a 52 ounce can. Using again my sandpaper, which I also purchased at Dollar Tree, I am sanding the exterior part of my can, especially where the glue was. And this is where I really focus on. And again, the entire exterior of the can I had to sand because when I paint, I just want to make sure that the paint will also adhere. And then I use a damp paper towel just to remove the dust that was created by sanding. And this is the chalk paint that I use and actually will be using for the entire project for all the DIYs that I needed to paint. And this is the Rust-Oleum chalked and this is the linen white and i'm going to be linking it in the description box below as part of the list of my materials so that you will be able to find it i purchased this at amazon again not a sponsored video i just want to let you know because a lot of people ask sometimes what i use so i just want to share them as well so i'm just using this brush this is actually a brush that is perfect for applying chalk paint and i'm just painting my can and I'm just going to be applying two coats of paint because one coat will just be enough to probably kind of sit through or sip through and then the second coat will just give it a very nice even finish. I'm also painting the top using my artist paint brush and this dipping it to the same color of paint and applying a couple of coats as well. Now just a reminder, before applying the second coat, you have to dry the first coat or else the paintbrush will drag the paint. Now I got this free printable, which I'll be linking in the description box below as well, from the graphicsfairy.com. She has a lot of options that are free. There are also some paid ones if you want to upgrade, but she's got a ton that are free. I have enlarged the image so that it will fit my can. Now I'm just fussy cutting using my scissors and originally I actually wanted to use this B but then later on I decided against it and you will see. So I'm just fussy cutting and I'm not even doing a fussy cut that is perfect that I'm cutting in each line but I'm actually giving it a little bit of white paper showing and not really at the edges of my images because my paint anyway that I'm using for my can is white and it is as white as this, as this paper that I'm using, the printer paper and that's why I didn't really want to bother too much. Here in my channel I try to keep my tutorial simple and easy to follow. Now I've noticed here when I was testing it out that it's still too long so instead of cutting my ribbons or bow, the design there, I cut one leaf from each side. Just fuzzy cutting it making sure that I have a good shape and that it's not so obvious that I cut something there. Here I'm testing the bee at the center but I have opted against it. Now to decoupage I'm using this matte finish. Mod Podge. I also purchased this at Dollar Tree and I'm just going to be putting this on the top. So I 
looked at the best side actually i want to keep the rough part where the glue was to the back even though i painted over it it's still showing a little bit so the smooth part is the one that i am going to be displaying on the front and that's where i'm attaching or decoupaging my images so i'm just using an artist paintbrush again here to apply my mod podge to the back to adhere it and then i'm also going to be applying mod podge on the top so those of you who are probably new to using mod podge it dries clear and i'm just applying enough mod podge to cover the images and also later on off camera i'm also going to be applying mod podge to the entire can because i want to protect this so that if ever i will use this for plants and i'm trying to water the plants i will not damage my can so here i just used my word doc and i just chose this letter or script and in cursive and then i just printed the word flowers so instead of the b i decided i will just put the obvious because it's going to be a flower pot so i'm just going to go ahead and cut this as well now this time i'm not fussy cutting it i'm just cutting straight on top and at the bottom and then on each side i am cutting fishtails or dovetails call it whatever so that to make it look like it's a banner and then i'm just going to be applying mud podge again to put it in place So using my permanent marker, I am just going to be applying some lines, you know, just broken lines at the top rim and at the bottom rim, just so that I could make it look like an enamel, sort of. It's kind of like distressed or old enamel. And here's the finished project. I really love how it turned out. And I'm going to be using it to put my lavender flowers. And here it is. I really love it. And you can also use Cricut or Silhouette or whatever digital cutter. Use or cut your designs. And I do have a Cricut but I know a lot of you do not have, so I'm just showing you inexpensive ways to do this as well. For the third DIY, I will be using another empty can. So I'm not just gonna show you how to remove the labels. It's the same peanut can in 52 ounce size. And I have these images that I got on Google and I am going to try my best to link it in the description box below. This is not from the Graphics Fairy. So I just printed one that shows a big wooden spoon. And then the other one is a whisk. Because I'm going to be using this to put my utensils on. So after applying a couple of coats of paint again, I'm using my artist paintbrush. And I'm decoupaging these two utensils on the top or on the front side of my can i am also applying a couple of coats of paint of this matte mod podge just to make sure that i protect this can because this is going to be in the kitchen where we're going to be putting our utensils and probably it'll be closer to the stove as well so i just want to protect it as much as possible and then using again my marker I am applying the same kind of lines that I created or applied to my first can to give it the appearance of kind of enamel or distressed look. And originally I was going to just 
keep it without any word because it's obvious I'm going to be putting my utensils there. So what I'm going to be doing is I am going to also print out a cutout from my Word program or Word doc. And then I just typed in and printed the word utensils. And then I'm just going to be adhering it as well with Mod Podge and then protecting it on top and then applying Mod Podge again to make sure that it's protected. And here it is with all our wooden utensils plus this whisk that I have. I place it at the center and I really love how this one turned out. For the fourth and final DIY, I will be creating a plant stand slash probably a small side table. And I'll be using these two wooden signs that I got at Dollar Tree. They're eight by eight inches square and I'm also going to be using this love sign I also got at Dollar Tree and I love that this is solid wood unlike the other box signs that is hollow at the back and this is perfect especially if you are trying to create something that would need to probably hold some weight so first I'm just going to be removing this cardboard on the top I really laughed a little bit when I saw that the exact sign was already printed on the box. So I think they just want to make it a little 2D. So that's why they added that as a cardboard. But I removed it and I also kind of wet it. it. It took me a little while. I was scraping it with my metal ruler. Or if you have a metal scraper, you can scrape it also with knife or any sharp object. And I was just removing the goo. Also at Dollar Tree, by the way, they sell those goo guns, so you can also use that as well. But to me, I'm just using plain damp paper towel or some water that I sprayed and then I just removed the goo. Now, I am going to be assembling this using my favorite wood glue by Gorilla. And I'm going to be linking it in the description box below as well. This is not sponsored. Again, I'm just sharing you the materials that I use and that I love to use and that have been tested. Now, the thing with wood glue, it doesn't dry as fast as hot glue. But I would urge you not to just use hot glue in this one because this is going to be something that you may want to lift around. So you would need some wood glue. Now, I will be applying hot glue on this side here and also on this side here as well. Any side that will touch the side of the frame or my wooden frame, like so. Doing that kept it intact already or the wood would hold together as opposed to me just applying wood glue because again, it will dry not as fast. It may take you a couple hours to fully dry wood glue. Overnight is the best. When it comes to drying wood glue or even E6000 if you're using E6000. So I'm just gonna do the same application here. And since hot glue dries fast, I made sure that I really press hard and fast so that I will have a secure adherence or connection. So the tougher glue, once it dries up, is the wood glue to hold this piece together. And then the hot glue, just a little bit of reinforcement there for ease of assembly. I am using that as a reinforcement. So on the opposite sides of each of the wood pieces, I am also applying some hot glue glue and wood glue to be honest i was only trying wood glue here and you will see even when i attach the plaque or the sign but then when i noticed that it's not really adhering and balancing i decided to also apply hot glue where i applied my wood glue on the sides
So since it's not adhering and it's unraveling, off camera, I have added hot glue to those portions that's going to touch the sides of my frame. And here it is after a couple of hours of drying and then I'm applying my first coat of paint. And then overnight, I dried this and then applied my second coat of paint the next morning. So here I'm just painting the legs as well as the top of the frame. But I'm not going to be painting the sides of the frame because I want the black and white theme. And then I went ahead and print this one from the graphicsfairy.com website. It's another freebie. And then this time it has some words on it already in French. So if you notice in my DIY today, I am doing kind of like a French kind of theme here. And I also incorporated just the black and white for all of them. So a little bit of French style there. Now again, with this Mod Podge, my matte finish Mod Podge, I am also going to use it to adhere and attach this sign on the top. And then I will be applying another couple of coats of this Mod Podge on the top to protect it because I might use it for potted plants. I'm thinking this will be perfect for tea you know my teacups if I want to drink some tea as well as maybe have a little bit of dessert that's why I chose that printout because it mentions something about that you know cafe as well as pate chocolate and also syrup so I figured if I'm not using it as a plant stand I can use it as well for my tea because I love drinking tea or even coffee or even chocolate or hot cocoa and then I will have my pates and then you know maybe not so much about the syrup but more on the pates to be honest so again like I said I'm just using my paintbrush here again applying a generous amount of my Mod Podge and then if you can see here, I'm also pushing out some air bubbles that may have formed underneath just to make it look a little bit smoother i am not an expert decoupager there are a lot of artists online here on youtube as well so you can watch them as well now i have this brayer and i am just using it or a roller and i'm using it to push out more bubbles that may have formed underneath to give it a more even look but i do love the distressed look that this one has and really i i'm really in love on the finish here so this is my tall kind of like mini side table slash plant stand as well as it could also be used or set up as a lantern to be honest without the glass because here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna be using this other diy which i'm gonna be linking in the description box below how i made this this is just a dollar tree led candle and I have decoupage another printout that I got online on there to show like a winter scene. And I place it on a Dollar Tree glass vase and then put some twine on the top to make it look more farmhouse. So that is kind of like the lantern portion at the bottom. You can put anything there, maybe a small book or maybe another small plant. But here, the other DIY I created earlier, I'm just showing you that it can be a plant stand as well. I really love it. So 
if you are living in a small house or a tiny home or in a small cottage or tiny apartment or even living in a dorm and you don't have enough space for a lot of things this one will be perfect for you if you want to use this to put your soda cans or your drinks and snacks I hope you enjoyed this video everyone. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, please share to anyone who may be interested in these types of projects and who may want these types of styles. This is more like a French country or French provincial style and I really love it a lot. So please give me a thumbs up, it does help my channel grow, it helps it gets recommended by YouTube. Also, when you leave some comments, that will help me as well. I do appreciate you all. If you're new to my channel, you're welcome to subscribe. Please don't forget to click that notification bell icon so that you will not miss any of my new uploads. And if you want to follow me on my other social media accounts, they're showing here on the screen here. I'll talk to you again on my next video, everyone. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye!